thanks for the introduction. And uh, to, um, my talk is about a robust sequestration scheme, and it's a joint work with search for. Okay, so uh, so first of all, uh, what is sequestration scheme? And uh, um, so as uh, actually, I mean the pr the f uh, the the former talk, and it also says that about sequestration scheme, and this is not a very rigid uh, um, version of the sequestration scheme, and we just uh, use it because for, for, our, for our convenience. Okay, so first, uh, for sequestration scheme, and actually we want to sequ um, share a secret among end parties, and uh, so there are two parameters. One is the, for the privacy, and we hope that any T parties cannot learn anything about S because there are maybe some corrupted party inside. And another feature is the reconstruction, and we will hope that any R parties can recon completely recover the secret. Um, this is the de our definition for the sequestration scheme, and uh, so there's a very ce celebrated like, semi-sequestration scheme to realize uh, our um, realize this uh, sequestration scheme. And uh, so uh, how to do that? And imagine that uh, we have a secret S, and we just pick a de random degree T polynomial Fx and let F0 equals S uh, for each party, and he will get an evaluation of this polynomial at some point. Um, for example, Si equals F alpha I. And uh, so um, by very simple like round interpolation, we can show that uh, actually it, was, it has T privacy and the T plus one reconstruction, and so we also call it a threshold sequestration scheme. And this is, and uh, so what is the robust sequestration scheme? And uh, besides the privacy and the reconstruction, we have another um, feature for this sequestration scheme, and uh, that means that first we imagine that uh, this sequestration scheme, we have an honest dealer and an honest reconstructor. The dealer will distribute the shares among the parties, and the uh, reconstructor will collect the shares and uh, reconstruct the, the secret. However, because we know there are some corrupt party, and uh, this corrupt party, he can corrupt his shares and he um, don't not honestly um, report his share. So that uh, we, uh, in this case, so assume that we have a T corrupted party. And um, yeah, in, the, in our slide, we assume that the first T is corrupted. And so these T parties, are, the shares are not corrected. And then <coughs> Yeah, uh, in this case, we still can robustly reconstruct, re reconstruct the secret with high probability, and uh, the pro error probability is uh, very small, exponentially small. So we call it the robust sequestration scheme. Uh, okay. So uh, in our um, in our paper, and we consider this this uh, adversary model and uh, the Russian adversary model. And uh, so what is the Russian adversary? Uh, the Russian adversary, and actually, he's more powerful. And because, uh, you know, uh, during the reconstruction uh, phase, and everyone, ha every party, he had to re send back his share to a reconstructor. But however, the adversary, and he control maybe, for example, T parties, and uh, he will delay his transmission until he saw all others share, and then his share is uh, depends on the shares of the honest party, and uh, in this case we call it a Russian adversary. Yeah, actually it's quite powerful, and uh, there's also non-Russian adversary. Non-Russian adversary means that uh, he don't have this power, and his decision is uh, completely determined by um, by his the T corrupted party. He only can see his share. Um, so this is a non-Russian adversary. Okay, so there are some. Re um, there are some results and uh, also some previous works uh, in this area, and I, I, I just list uh, some of them because there are many, uh, many results, and uh, just these this, uh, results are more relevant. And uh, so, yeah, uh, so there are actually there are several, um, there are two um, performance we can comp we can. Um, we can do comparison, and the first is the share, and uh, you know the, the smaller the share is, the better the performance it will be. And uh, so first, uh, the m is the um, m is the secret size, and n is the number of play party, and kappa is the security parameter. Uh, you see, uh, in this paper, we achieve uh, we ha actually we have two results. One result is that which achieved optimal. Of open node share size, and also the Russian adversary is more. I mean, 
<laughs> it's a strong adversary model. And, uh, but in this, uh, this result is uh, not running in polynomial time, it's running in super polynomial time. So it's, uh, and another result uh, is running in polynomial time, but it's not optimal shell size and achieve some n, an n to the epsilon. Epsilon is a very, you can be any small constant. Okay, so there are two results we can compare with. And the uh, one result from CFOR12 paper, and they achieve O n plus kappa because this is the Russian adversary. So we are in the same adversary model, but uh, their share size is much bigger. It's O n level, and uh, um, and uh, so and uh, there are another paper. It's the uh, 16th uh, Euro Prep 16th paper, and uh, they uh, actually they achieved the uh, optimal share size. However, and uh, it's not a it's uh, not a rushing adversary. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, besides, I mean, uh, we all all these result at least all these result are listed. They achieved the maximum corruption. Means that uh, the the adversary is only one less than the oh, oh, sorry the corrupted party is only w one less than the honest party. So. Yeah, this is the maximum corruption, and it's the uh, most difficult uh, as prob um, situation to handle. Okay, so let's compare and do some comp. Uh, yeah, there, there are some differences uh, between the, our scheme and the scheme in their paper, in uh, your group 16's paper. Uh, so actually, uh, yeah, we also borrow some idea from their paper, and uh, there are two two things, two kind of things are same. And first of First, we consider the pairwise uh, um, authentication so that each um, and uh, one party don't he no, not only I mean share and ha hold the share of the circuit, also he do some verification verification for the other party. So make sure that other party is not corrupted. If uh, if it's corrupted and you are honest party, you can find uh, his corruption and uh, these kind of settings. And also and uh, and of course, if you verify all the animal other parties and the, the share size will go grows to O n, so it's too big. So we use a random verification graph to reduce the share size. Uh, of course, there are some difference. Um, first of all, I mean, in, because they use the Russian adversary model, and we, they, oh, sorry, their model is not Russian adversary model, so, so they have actually, they can do more things. Uh, like, uh, first of all, they, use, they, they, they authenticate the share by authentic authentication code, and uh, so they also authenticated the Keys and uh, it's, uh, but in Russian model it's uh, it's not in, we cannot do that uh, and uh, because uh, in this case and uh, the limitability of adversary lying about the key and also but uh, however it's yeah it's in the Russian adversary model they are their scheme doesn't work uh, yeah also uh, but in our work I mean we only authenticate some part of the shares instead of the whole shares and uh, yeah it makes uh, so we we keep our authentication key secret so yeah but it makes Problem more difficult. Uh, okay, so actually there are some uh, um, building blocks uh, in our uh, in our paper, and uh, this one is uh, we introduced to introduce the list decodable codes in our construction, and uh, this is also different from their construction. They don't have this. Uh, and these building blocks, and it's it's a very nice. Uh, we actually we use the four-digit resolve code. It has very nice property. It can cor correct up to I mean uh, one minus r minus epsilon n errors, but also the list size is very small. Um, in our actually in our paper, we have two different settings for epsilon. Uh, first setting uh, epsilon is a constant, and the other setting epsilon is a, actually he is a one over log n, and uh, so because it's a one over log n, so it will output a. Uh, um, exponential size and uh, so and not a super polynomial size sorry it's not exponential size but uh, so so th that's why we got two different uh, um, result uh, solutions and uh, one solution is a super polynomial because of our list decodable codes okay so actually also there is a verification graph and uh, yeah we, we every party he need to verify the other some small set of other parties and uh, so that uh, if he is, he is honest and he will provide some information whether the other party is uh, corrupted or not uh, however of course we don't know if uh, he's honest or not because the, the if it's corrupt party he could also disguise that he's honest or he will do some other strategy to but uh, anyway i mean so so this is very important important uh, and uh, because we, we because the honest party is also always be the majority one so we have some kind of mechanism to do to check whether his uh, own ch um, his own honest uh, no, not a hundred percent sure but uh, yeah with some probability or do something okay so 
um, yeah, this is our encoding scheme. And first of all, we, go, we get a secret S, and we encode it by the photorism code, and using the verification, random verification graph to add some authentication tag and keys to the share. And, the first, and, and at the end, we encode the tag. Uh, the tag is uh, um, stored uh, robustly and globally, so everyone can, learn, can know the tag. But uh, he, if he corrupts the tag, uh, it, makes, uh, it, makes no, it makes no sense. Uh, it doesn't help because we store the tag robustly, but uh, we also had to sacrifice some privacy of the tag, so the tag is known to everyone. But uh, yeah, if we corrupt it, we can recover it uh, yeah, with high probability. So, yeah. so this year, everyone get, uh, yeah. It's and uh, so our reconstruction scheme, actually, we are reconstruction because we say that uh, uh, because the, in our setting, adver Russian adversary model, I mean, the adversary, if you only send your share to reconstruct uh, in one round, and uh, the reconstruction and the adversary can learn anything about the honest party, so yeah, it's not safe, so we separate it into three rounds, uh, and then, yeah, this, so we first we transmission back, uh, send back the the share, and then we use some algorithm, and uh, and actually in our paper we define that there's some passive corrupted party, and the passive party, and we just uh, see um, to see if the passive party is the number of passive party is bigger or small, and we have two different route route to find the corrected uh, secret to reconstruct the secret. And uh, this is very key, impor very important in our analysis. Uh, we we, want, we divide the honest, dishonest party into two types. One is a passive party, another one is an active party. Okay, so let's see some uh, from the verification graph. We can we, we have some observation, and this observation is very key to our analysis. And first of all, uh, if, if uh, yeah, we first of all we need to define the passive corrupt party. The passive corrupt party and uh, he. He didn't craft. If uh, he didn't, he didn't craft the SI. SI is just the, the sec resolve code. In, uh, it's a resolve code, and he just inco the encoded. Um, we use the for the resolve code to encode the secret. So SI is just a, a symbol of this for the resolve code. And if active corrupted, and he can corrupt anything. So this uh, this is our definition of uh, of the corrupted party. And then and uh, we have uh, yeah, there are some several observations. First is the passive party and honest party. They can all pass our verification of the honest parties uh, because of this property. And uh, the second is that active party. If uh, if you are active corrupted party, you cannot pass the verification of the honest party, and uh, the last uh, is also very important, that the distribution of honest party neighbors are uniform at random. So that means uh, if adversary, he de when he um, when he decides which party is the uh, honest or passive one, which is the active one, and uh, he learns nothing about the distribution of the honest party's neighbors. And uh, so because we separate into three rounds, and so we, we can make it uh, happen. Okay, so there are two settings. First is we assume that the, 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 there are many passive parties, large, so the P is very large, and in this case, so we can use the uh, resolve, uh, for the resolve code to do reconstruction. However, this, this will output a list of the candidates, and it's not only one, but we can make sure that correct one is also always in this list. And uh, then we use that with the help of verification graph, we can find this correct one out of the AL candidates. Yeah, that's. And uh, and so let's go to the small um, passive uh, small p and for small p and uh, yeah actually we have a t plus one honest party and uh, it's more one at least uh, it's one more uh, at least uh, more one more than the act uh, corrupted one so if we can we our organ works for every uh, honest party and we take a majority vote and we will find the correct secret. So let's assume that we start from the honest party and uh, the red one is uh, a red spot is on a uh, green spot is honest one and the red one is a uh, um, passive one and the black one is uh, active one. So because the red one is always be the in the minority, so we just. Uh, and uh, the first step, and uh, we start from the honest party, and uh, we do verification, and all the honest party, and uh, if he's uh, the neighbor of this uh, red green one, and uh, he will be passed the verification. Also, the passive one will pass the verification, but the active one will never pass the verification. Uh, 
Then the second round, but uh, things are a little bit more subtle uh, because I mean f because there are some passive one uh, passive party and uh, the passive party he can he, he can let the active party pass his verification, and so so that uh, the black one will join the circle and uh, uh, join the set and also you know the, because the green one is honest one honest one we always bring the honest one and the passive one in and uh, so so but but our, however our our algorithm will make sure that. Uh, uh, if, if we only do it for a constant round and the honest one, uh, the active one and the passive one, it is only only will be the minority vast, uh, much, uh, it, it will only account for very small proportion of this uh, number of the uh, proportion in this set. So it will, it will don't affect our analysis. So we don't care too much about it. So let's summarize. Um, so so yeah, uh, let's do some. There are some conclusions from our um, our algorithm, and uh, after I mean, do it for constant round, and the honest party will be mu uh, n, and uh, the, it will be the vast majority of the set. And uh, but however, the active and the passive party, and uh, they only account for I mean, a square root epsilon of the pad, a proportion of the set. So so that and um, because uh, the, I mean, the honest one is a vast majority, and uh, we have some other algorithm, and the other algorithm, and uh, we just uh, using the probabilistic argument to find all the honest party and uh, some passive party, but uh, the active party is uh, is less than the passive party. So in this case, I mean, because our, our yeah, we encoded it by resum code, uh, for the resum code, for the resum code is also a resum code. You can treat it as a resum code. So there are very good redundancy. And uh, so we can, then we can use some unique decoding co algorithm to decode uh, correctly. Okay, so this is our two algorithm, and uh, we want to have some concluding remarks for our, for our paper, uh, for our result. And uh, actually, we pro pro present the two robust equation scheme against the Russian adversary. And uh, yeah, one scheme achieves CR size is suboptimal, but uh, running in polynomial time. Another scheme achieves um, optimal CR size, but the running time is exponential because of the least size. Uh, so there's uh, some open problem whether we can do it uh, in polynomial size. Um, do it in polynomial time and also optimal share size. Yeah. This is my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Uh, any questions? So you said that the Ritz on Solomon code should be folded. Can you can you Comment on that. Why why should it be folded, and what does it mean exactly? I'm uh, sorry, I can't. Why the Ritz Solomon code should be folded? Uh, sorry, I can't. I beg your pardon. The, so, uh, are you using normal Ritz Solomon codes, or fold? Like you said, they are folded. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. I, I can't see listen, hear it okay. clearly. Sorry, because uh, ah. because maybe it, maybe the stage uh, for uh, so. Uh, uh, so the read sol it, uh, the question is about the read Solomon code. Yeah. So are you, so I, say I understand correctly. You're not using any read Solomon code. You mean the list size or list size? Yeah, because this is the I mean um, this is a new result from maybe eight yeah from the Fox uh, 18th or 14th 19th paper and uh, by Mary Water and uh, I guess I, I I don't remember all the people's name but uh, yeah it will, they will achieve very they have a very good result and achieve a constant uh, list size and also like the the size of your so you have a verification graph yeah uh, so c can you tell us about the number of edges in this? Oh yeah, yeah. Of, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah it's, a good, it's a very good question. So, okay. Uh, so so actually, and there are, there are, uh, because we have two schemes. Uh, one scheme we achieve the optimal size, a uh, shear size, so that uh, the degree of the verification graph is log n, or uh, log square n, or, or cubic n. I can't remember it. Yeah. But but uh, but it's uh, it's a polylog n. Actually, we can say it's a polylog n. And uh, the second uh, another algorithm and uh, another scheme achieves. Uh, um, it's suboptimal, and uh, the the degree is n to the epsilon or square. Actually, it's n to the square root epsilon. I mean, more, be more precise. Okay. But, uh, is that connected to the parameters for the Ritz Solomon code, or is it independent? Uh, actually, it's connected to our uh, our graph algorithm. Actually, we use the expander graph, and so the if the degree of expand graph, and it's uh, the, the, the and the larger the degree is, and uh, I mean, so it can expand it more quickly. So if the degree is small and expand it more slowly. 
And uh, so, uh, but but but, uh, but because first of all, we need to con consider our graph algorithm so that uh, we fix our uh, degree. And uh, then, and uh, but uh, there'll be another problem occurs because uh, if we, if our degree is uh, uh, if our degree in our expansion graph is uh, bigger, and it means that uh, we ha we don't we cannot have too many passive party. So so and so it it, it will add a difficulty to our list decoding algorithm. And in our list decoding algorithm, we cannot achieve constant uh, you know epsilon. We can only achieve one over log n epsilon. So, so, so it's, it's all, it's the least size is uh, super, super polynomial. So, yeah, this is a trade off. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, any more questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.